Welcome back everybody. Today we are going to continue working on the 18-foot Saratoga built by Lake and Sea Boats in 1959. Today's episode will cover the splitting of the hull from the deck by removing the rub rail, uh, cutting the joint, and then lifting it onto its own separate frame to support it. Let's get to work. To release the rub rail, you have a set of um, silicon bronze uh, bolt with an acorn nut on the back. All you have to do is take your vice grips, just a little pair is fine, clamp it on that nut so it's your second hand, and then just take a nice screwdriver, make sure you can get into that head, and just slowly turn it, trying not to strip that soft bronze. And if you're lucky like I have been, these will come out very easy. Sometimes they break. And then the nut is also there. And then you're done. Some areas of the rub rail have been damaged so bad on this boat that I have to use some creative methods to get the rub rail bent back out so I can get at the nut behind because the screw has also been rounded off on the top. So this is how I do that. Take a piece of flat iron. You can also buy these at welding shops, vice grips that have very long uh, teeth or mouth on them. That would be the best operation, but this is what I had in my shop. You just take that aluminum, because you're trying to preserve it the best you can, and just try to keep, keep a little tension on it, and bend that really soft aluminum out. And move it down a little bit if you have to, just so you can get at that screw. Now, I'm to the point with these screws that I'm not finding any screw heads that I can work with. So what I'm gonna do is uh, address it like this and go in and simply just turn the nuts off in the back. These are really nice acorn nuts in really great shape. You just get a little pair of pliers, like a needle nose, maybe a little bit wider. I'm using a pair of pliers that has a little bit of a nose on it. And you just simply turn those off. In many cases like this one, you just go ahead Take it off with your finger. So after removing the rub rail, we have to take the staples out that were used for the permanent bond between the hull and the deck. Um, within the joint is also an adhesive. I don't know how strong that is. Um, but I do know that these staples are, are firmly in place and they're industrial uh, strength. So I've played around with a few techniques and I'll show you what works depending on the tools you have. Um, the first one and the most easiest I thought was uh, just getting an oscillating saw and then you find the staple and very gently go between that joint and just take it off. Now, the trick that goes through there 
then you have to still get the staple out. So I go underneath it and get a sacrificial screwdriver that just can get under that staple and you just pop it off, kind of being gentle with the gel coat. You also have to get the legs off the staple. So if you take the screwdriver, push them up, they will probably bend over with an iron, almost like a rivet when they were put in and then they just they pop out. Um, so there's that way of doing it. You could also just go in and just use the use the screwdriver hammer technique. Get straightened out. Sometimes using the flat of your screwdriver. Get back up under the under the deck. Put in from the bottom. And hold pull up so you're not damaging the belt gel coat. You're, if there's anything going on, it's gonna be here at the rub rail. But I find it very difficult. It really doesn't want to come out. So it did here it goes, yeah. But the staple broke. <laughs> so uh, I think because of the age of the staple, the speed in which you could use the uh, oscillating saw and the fact that you still have to take both legs out with the pliers and uh, the head out with the screwdriver gently, um, I'm gonna go with the oscillating tool technique. Um, some people might suggest using a reciprocating saw or a sawzall, same concept as this. I think there's a little more control with the oscillating saws, but again, be very gentle because, yeah, you have a lot to work with there, but at some point, if you go too deep, you're into the hull, and then that's just more repairs you have to make later. stopped at the stern of the boat with the, the oscillating saw because I know that the transom, which is about an inch and a half thick and made of plywood most likely, is right here. So I knew that it's getting to a point where the transom is, is here and I didn't want to maybe mess up something if there's a, if this transom piece has a, an inner lip that maybe I might be cutting, so I stopped. And until I take off these screws, which are seen on all Lake and Seas in the stern, these are um, bolted, or not bolted, screwed into the transom, which is wood, and under that piece right there. Uh, once we get these out, and I spend some time investigating how the hull will come off and not harm this transom, uh, which is part of the, the hull. In some Lake and Seas, these appear to be separate pieces that were added. This one appears to be integral to the hull. So I'm assuming that once I get this uh, taken care of and some other releasing going on at the top of the transom where the deck sits, um, it should be ready to lift off. And, um, and then I have to go inside and take care of some screws 
uh, the, the seats that are on the inside are screwed to the floor. So, so I'm back at the transom and I've got it all released around the edges, um, even with some of the Bondo that had been added. Um, took out the screws on the outside, which were into the transom. Um, you saw they were a little hard to get out. Sometimes you have to use a chisel and a screwdriver to just help back it out because it didn't have any threads to dig in. The chisel or, or any other flat seal to get that uh, screw pattern into something, some meat, uh, you can get the screw out. That probably tells me that the transom is rotten, so it wasn't even finding any grit with those threads. So I went ahead and got that one out. This one was fine. Uh, now we're on to the um, self bailing engine well. Uh, they have ferrules, which are brass tubes that are driven in uh, to protect the wood from water. And they're usually caulk or something around them when they put them in. Um, they're usually two sided, meaning there's one from each side, and then they have a flared end, so it looks nice. And um, this one's missing the outside, and there's really no other way to get it out. Um, you can drill it, or you can take a chisel. And what it does is it hits that soft brass and it either collapses the brass or it catches it enough to push it out. And um, this is what happens on this one. It came out the other side. So this is what it looks like. It um, would have been in terrible condition Anyways, it looks like it's falling apart. Um, and you can buy these readily for replacement. And um, because it's an engine well, you never have to put a plug in it. It's meant to self bail. Um, so this one has the flare on both sides. So I'm not sure if it'll come out as easy. I might have to come in from the top and do it go down to get that flare started out collapse it like I'm doing here. Um, the brass that's left is very deteriorated and soft. Which is usually not the case with brass. You know, knowing that the transom is going to be worked on, I'm, I'm not being terribly careful. I'm scratching the Delco because a lot of this ought to be, if it's not replaced, at least heavily fixed. If I collapse the ferrule, and then I should be able to drive it through. Which it is. There you go. That is kind of a hidden fastener, if you want to call it. Uh, it goes through the deck piece and into the um, transom piece, which is part of the hull, so it's technically a fastener uh, that will keep you from getting this deck off. So these have to come up. took the boat apart, I built a wooden frame on four casters that would support the deck once it had been removed from the hull. And you need to do this because they are, even though made of very heavy fiberglass, they are still very floppy. And what you want to do is make a support system that will keep that intact while you work on it. It also allows you to bring the work down to uh, waist level in my case so that you don't have to jump on ladders and, and work on the floor which is should always be avoided so I went ahead and built this frame with some measurements from the boat 
But I found out after I removed it that it contains a lot of flotation foam. Well, I knew there was foam in the boat. I didn't know if it was gonna be under the deck, especially, or under the rear fins. This boat had neither, like some of the other smaller moat boats. This one is under the center cockpit, uh, or I should say center seats, which make up the front cockpit back seat, and then the second cockpit rear facing seats. And it's a beautiful um, c creation of, of foam to keep the boat alive, or uh, afloat. In addition to the, the bottom, which I'll show you later, was, which is sealed as a flotation uh, device as well. So my plan is to leave the original uh, flotation foam under the center seat setup and just work around it. I don't have a need to take it out and it's still in great shape. It's not wet and it's original to the boat and would help keep the boat afloat if there was ever a sinking, at least to the gunnel. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix this frame and make it more supportive of the front deck lip that's still floppy and then I can get to work on the sand. So I spent some time working on modifying the frame that my deck will sit on while I restore it. Um, I had built it to the dimensions I thought would be appropriate, but added on the nose piece so that I could support the deck. It was a lot floppier than I thought. So I ended up adding that on just by uh, adding a two by eight to the existing uh, cradle. And I'll be able to use that for other lake and seas in the future because, you know, you just take it apart with screws. So then, um, yeah, so I'm happy with that. Everything's level, the shear is level. So I know that I restore it and put paint on it, I won't have a deck that will flex because then I will have more cracks that I'll have to fix once it's fastened back to the hull. So I just used uh, scrap lumber, two by sixes, two by eights, two by fours, and basically found support under where the rear seat is. I wasn't able to do it here under the middle seat area because of the foam. And I wanted to leave that in place. So I just put a two by four right up under the deck for support. I also did that under the deck uh, I ended up putting a two by four all the way across for more support. And then I have a two by four support for the nose. So um, I'm able to get up under there and work. And that's what I want. So I can get up under there and get the dash. Um, I'll probably lift that up and I'll show you some work on the dashboard, taking some instruments out and things like that. And I'm um, doing repairs. So yeah, um, I think I put eight casters total which, you know, it's probably the most expensive thing here in addition to the four by fours, but well worth it. It's, I brought it down to waist level for me and that will allow me to work comfortably, which is what I want to do. So, so I left my gantry crane in place so I could at least lift the front of the deck mold. Uh, I released this, the rear gantry crane because it's sitting on the frame securely and that's what I want. And I set the brakes on my uh, table, so they're not going to go anywhere. But this gives you an idea what is now uh, some part of the projects I have to tackle. Um, I can get in here and release the steering wheel hub, but I have to still go around to the front in the cockpit and release the wheel itself. Like I was saying in the first video, this steering wheel column is a Volrath brand, which a lot of companies use, and then Detroit Marine Engineering put their wheel on it. So this is just something I have to, to deal with. And I'll take that out so I can do some repairs back here. These gauge holes are basically gonna stay. I might do some resup or support and fix just to make sure that they're right for the new gauges or the gauges I'm gonna use. And then I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the, the dashboard. That was a separate molded piece when they put it together and then they tabbed it in with fiberglass and resin to make it secure, which would have been great to leave that alone. But over here, sometime during the, the life of the boat, it was broke. And I'm gonna to try to clamp that. And if I can get it to, to a place I'm happy with, I'm going to just patch resin and glass there and then do uh, filler on the surface and just leave the dash in place. 
Um, the only other reason I would take that off is to get at the dashboard plate, which unfortunately, it's uh, studs that were driven through and I'm not sure how they're secured and I do not want to break that pot metal dashboard emblem. So I need to figure out whether I'm gonna remove just parts of it to get at it or not. And then I'll be able to move on uh, to the hull and I can show you some of the things I found there. So the deck and the hull pieces have been separated and I wanted to give you a little um, sneak peek into what the hull looks like. Uh, first impressions are a lot of dirt and debris uh, which gathered in the boat since um, 1959 including a couple two cycle outboard oil cans that must have gotten between the front seat and the hull and were lost forever. Uh, rest is the normal fish line, dirt. Um, you see that the transom uh, looks like it's got rot, which I assumed that's two pieces of um, one and a half in, or excuse me, two pieces of three quarter plywood are usually fiberglass together and then uh, they make up the hull and there's a glass coat put over with paint. Um, it's like somebody had some bilge uh, plugs put in for probably access for the uh, bilge pumps. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and uh, we'll go from there. So that brings us up to date as far as the 18 foot Saratoga um, project. Uh, that boat, what I'm sitting on now, has been sold. I'm now the new owner and I have to push that project back till next fall uh, when I have other projects out of the way that I've already started. Um, so this one will be dormant for a while, but I want you to um, tune in and watch the restoration, the ongoing restoration of a 1957 Wondercraft, which was built in Holland, Michigan uh, by Clyde Paul, and very few were ever made. Um, that project was started by me over 20 years ago, and I've slowly been working on it between other people's projects, and uh, I want to finish it. So uh, the next week will be me putting together a video about that um, using stills and then narration to bring you up to date. And then we'll get right into the current uh, projects that I'm working on that boat. Hopefully get it ready for spring boat shows. So thank you again for tuning in. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the like button and I'll see you next week.